on the lighter side maybe? You want some lighter side? I know some people come just for the jobs. I know. I know. All right. How about this one? A young boy enters a barber shop and the barber whispers to his customer, hey, see this is the dumbest kid in the world. Watch and I'll show you. The barber puts a dollar bill in one hand and two quarters in the other. He then calls the boy over and asks, hey, which one do you want, son? And the boy takes the quarters and leaves. What did I tell you, said the barber. That kid never learns. Later, when the customer leaves, he sees the same young boy coming out of the ice cream store. Hey, son, come here. Let me ask you a question. Why do you take the quarters instead of the dollar bill? Huh. The boy licked his comb and said, it's easy, because the day I take the dollar, the game is over. <laughs> Smart. Smart kid. I'll pay you later. <laughs> a blind guy <clears throat> on a bar stool shouts to the bartender, hey, want to hear a blonde joke? Oh, it's a hushed voice, and the guy next to him says, Hey, before you tell that joke, you got to know something. Our bartender is blonde. The bouncer is blonde. And I'm six feet tall, 200 pound black belt. The guy sitting next to me is six foot two, and he weighs 225. And he's a rugby player. And the fellow to your right is six foot five, pushing 300, and he's a wrestler. Each one of us, each one of us is blonde. So think about it, mister. Do you still want to tell your joke? The blind guy says, well, no. Not if I'm going to have to explain it five times. for the blonde men for a change. Amen? We usually get to girls, right? All right, Terry, we're eventually going to go to Romans chapter 8, so you can get that one cranked up. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're just so delighted in you, God. We just thank you for your faithfulness and your love that just flows. And we thank you for your rich promises, and one of that is that Holy Spirit. Lord, you dwell within us, and now you're going to anoint your word as we share tonight. Make things clear, O oh God. And give us ears to hear. Give us ears to hear. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As a way of introductory, I'd like to share a little, little story or a little scene with you. I don't know how many of you are keeping up with the newspapers in regards to the little country of Haiti. It is so sad to see what's happening in Haiti. Um, I know when our beloved brother Joe Ruby was down there as a missionary, he let me know that things were really bad down there. They're worse now. They've had the hurricane. They have total corruption all over the place. And the cartel pretty well runs the place. The president doesn't have much authority. They're cutting off the, the fuel supplies. They're cutting off the money. I mean, the food supplies, inflation's out of the city. People are fleeing that, that country. In fact, America and Canada both pulled out uh, the people down there that are living down there because of Haiti. Well, let's suppose that a family living there in Haiti with all of its struggles, all the darkness, all the corruption, all the crime, all of the deceitfulness, you name it, and they happen to come into America and they get to come in. I mean, not being stopped at the border, they were brought into the United States. And you can imagine what this family thought when they arrived in America. And after a certain time period, they were able to become citizens of the United States. And at first it was very difficult. They were grateful to be here, they enjoyed all the luxuries and they enjoyed a lot of things, but it was a struggle because they didn't know the language. They had to work on the language. They had to work on the laws. You know, they have a different ruler now. They want to make sure they obey their laws and so forth, and then getting along with other people. 
And it was just a real big struggle to live in America. And there was always a temptation too, and things went were, was going were going nicely, and they've adjusted to the to the new country. Uh, they started hearing word from Haiti, and of course, family members are saying, "Why don't you come on down and visit?" And the temptation there was to go back to Haiti. Well, I'm going to stop there, and I'll add more to the vignette as we go on. Let's take a look at Romans chapter 8, and then we're going to see how this all fits in. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak, through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on, accord, on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. I'm going to stop there. The picture that I was painting, and some of you have already put the pieces together, you see the big contrast between Haiti and, and the United States. The corruption, the darkness of Haiti, as opposed to, well, I shouldn't, I have to really kind of paint the picture a little rose, more rosy than it is in the United States. But we see the difference. Because the kingdom of darkness, or the kingdom of the evil one, the kingdom of the flesh that we're talking about, is like a Haiti. And it's there in darkness, it's a lifestyle that's um, uncertain, never satisfied. There's a spirit of bondage there because they are in bondage. It's ruled by pride. They can't please God. They're carnally minded. They, they follow the law of sin and death. They're in darkness. They're condemned. They're condemned. And their children are brought. We could go on. And yet, going from that to the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, as we know that they're synonymous, there's a big, big difference, isn't there? Because we're talking about the kingdom of God and kingdom in, of Christ. And what I just read here pretty well describes the passport that's needed to go from the kingdom of darkness into that kingdom of light. From the kingdom of the evil one, the kingdom where, where sin and flesh rule, into the kingdom where the spirit of God rules and reigns. And you see the passport to get in there is one that I related to last week. I know you don't remember. But remember, try to, maybe humor me, but we know that there Last week we realized that, man, places, this world that we live in is pretty bad, much like Haiti. And even our own selves that are engrossed in living in it. We live in fear, we're living in competition, we're living in uncertainty. And I told you that there was a gift for you, just what you needed. And that was the gift that God had to give you. And once you realize the need for that, you all you have to do is receive that gift and what i read right here said what you couldn't do in the world trying to be good and trying to get ahead and trying to and trying to and trying to god says no you can you can't make it because you see the ticket into my kingdom is righteousness and you can keep on trying all you want but you're not going to do it that's why jesus came as a child why didn't he just come in a full-grown man and just come down and die on the cross? No. He came as a child. Why? Because he grew up with all of the pull and the tug that you and I experience. The temptations were strong for him. But he overcame. And he never succumbed to any of the temptations. He never sinned. He led the perfect life. So when he was crucified on the cross, there was no justification for him to die. He was clean. He was righteous. 
But because he said, I will take all of your sins and I will go ahead and pay that price. And I'm going to give you a free ticket. I'm going to give you a passport into my kingdom. And when he rose from the dead, it's like the father says, paid in full. Enter in. So when you receive that gift, my friend, you are now citizens of a different kingdom. You are citizens of a different kingdom. You might have roots in the old, but you are now in the new. So let's take a look and see if we can keep that in mind, and let's see what the Bible tells us about this kingdom. It says, um, for the righteous, the, the righteous requirement of the law must be fulfilled in us, which we didn't, couldn't do, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Watch this in verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh, okay, that's the world, that's the Haiti, right? Those who live according to the flesh, what do they do? They set their minds on things of the flesh. When it says live according to the flesh, that's their lifestyle. That's their day in and day out. That's what they focus on. And of course their mind is on the flesh because they live in the world that's ruled by the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, they set their minds on things of the spirit. So if you're in the kingdom of God, you're in the good old USA, you got your mind set in your new kingdom. You get your mind set. You got, you got a new ruler. His name is Jesus. Amen? And you know, he does have some rules too. And you're going to find out that it, sometimes it's hard to obey the rules in this new kingdom. It's condition to the old. Hello? Okay. For to be carnally minded, that means to have your mind set on the flesh, that's death. The wages of sin is death, right? And that's what's happening in the world. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. In our new kingdom, in the kingdom of the Lord, what do we have? We have life and we have peace. Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because the carnal minded, the one that's always thinking of the flesh, is enmity against God. What does that mean? Hostile. See, the people in the world are the ones that have their minds set on the flesh because that's all they know. And they don't like God. We learn that in Romans number uh, chapter 1. They will suppress the truth because they know that he's around. They know there's a God. But they don't want to be around him because he might require something from them. And so you have that, that friction, that enmity. They're enemies of God. Oh, you tell them that and they'll say, oh, I, don't, I love God, I love Jesus. Do they really love the true God? Or are they loving the God that they put together in their mind? That he's a God of love, he understands. And when he starts stripping away his holiness and stripping away, what do they have? An idol. An idol. So there really is that, you see that fight, that enmity with God. But you, here we are, Christians that live in the kingdom, but you are not in the flesh, but you're in the spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. That's where we live. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he's not his. In other words, we are in the kingdom of God. We've got Christ in us. And we are in the spirit. Hello. Period. That's who we are. Okay? Remember last week I said, who are you? You're forgiven. Who are you? You're in Christ. Who are you? You're in the kingdom. You talk to these uh, um, Haitians that come into this country. They've been here a while. Well, who are you? I'm an American citizen. I'm an American citizen. They'll be the first to wave the flag. Yeah. And they, are, they just love their country. Okay? And that's the, that's the way we are in our new kingdom. Okay. Verse 11, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who rose Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit 
who dwells in you. You know, last Sunday, amongst the many neat things that Pastor Mark shared, he mentioned something really neat. He called the kingdom of God, what? The kingdom of heaven, remember? And he said, Jesus has put all things under his feet. He's defeated the, the enemies. He says, we are in Christ, and we are seated in the heavenly places with the Lord. So when we realize that, that we're just getting a little taste of what heaven's all about. Right. A little taste. Oh, it comes in stages. Just like the Haitians have to learn. They're going to stay here for a while. They're, they're going to want to, the battle, the struggle is there, but they're going to want to stay here a little longer because gradually, as they get used to the kick, the customs, as they get used to what's required, as they get used to how neat the, class, the United States is, they're going to feel more comfortable. And the same thing applies to us. We first get saved, boy, this is great, fantastic, all my sins are taken away, God is good, here I go. And then we have the struggles. We have the struggles. we got to live a little longer in the kingdom of God. We've got to really appreciate what we've got here in the kingdom of God and jump in the gun. All right, let's go down to, I know, let's forget my place. How about 12? Is that where we're at? Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. What does that mean? That means this. My friends, listen carefully. Just like, just like Pastor Mark mentioned, on Sunday night. Yes, when you come to Christ, the power of sin is broken. You are no longer a slave or bondage to it. I don't care what sin you put in there, whether it's, you know, pride, whether it's alcohol, whatever it is, it's broken. Okay? However, we still have this temptation you see, we still have this temptation. And, and we realize that we don't have to yield to that. We don't owe our stupid flesh a penny. We don't owe the world that's operating and controlling the flesh, we don't owe them a penny. So don't feel like you have to pay them, okay? That's what he's saying here. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, those he, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again. Oh, that means in the world, you were in bondage. What were you in bondage to? To fear. People are fearful. They don't know what's coming down. They don't know what's happening. Where are they going to get their next meal? What's this going to happen? All this. But you received the what? Spirit of adoption, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit, what? They bears witness with us that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. I don't think we understand what that means. Do you realize that now God is Daddy God? Do you realize that He picked you out? He picked you out of that nursery. I want that one, that one, that one. I'm adopting them. I'll pay for them through the blood of my of my Son Jesus Christ. They are mine. And furthermore, because they're my sons and daughters, they're going to get joint joint. Um, uh, Inheritance, thank you, with Jesus. It's just like when Walt's, uh, Walt and I are married, and because he, when his mom died and his sister died, guess what? I'm a joint heir with him from his, the death of his parents and his, his mom and sister. I'm a joint heir. I, I'm benefiting as just as much as he is. And when you realize that, and it says something about that, but there's, this, there's a line here we don't like to hear. It says what? We are sons and heirs of Christ if indeed we suffer with him. How do we suffer with him? 
We suffer with him because we still have the residue of our old sinful nature in us. The Haitians left completely out of Haiti, but my friends, we're still living in the world that's run by the world, the flesh, and the devil. We still are exposed to all of the seduction of the world. We still are, are, are harassed by the ruler who fills us, fills us with lies to try to get you sucked back into it. And it's a struggle. Pastor Mark mentioned that last Sunday night. It's not easy. That, that caterpillar has to struggle when it's ready to get out of that cocoon. It's a struggle. And is he ever going to make it? And sometimes that's exactly the way we feel. And I think the Haitians, if they start missing the food and missing the companionship and the friendship and all that, and they go back to Haiti, who knows? They might say, you know, but you know when they're back there, they start looking around and they start remembering their new country as American citizens. And they say, we're visiting, thank you, but we're going back to where we know that we have security, we have love and so forth. And that's what's going to be the struggle in your life. When you're going to be exposed to all of that, and then the Holy Spirit's dealing with inside of you, and the first thing you say is, wait a minute, hold everything. I am an adopted child of God. I am dearly loved. I am co-heirs with Jesus Christ. I sit in the heavenly places with him. I cannot lose. Nothing can separate me from his love. I am forgiven. You realize who you are. You come back and you have a chapter 7 experience like, like um, our precious um, Paul had about the things I want to do, I don't do, and when I do, I do, do. But then he realizes, you know, there's no condemnation in me. I can confess my sins and he forgives me. It's over with. So let me tell you something. Here's the big danger. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. In your struggle, be careful. Do not go back and manage the struggle or fight it through fleshly means. Let me tell you how you do that. It's so easy because you love God so much that you don't want to see a, you want to see a smile on his face. And I don't know about you, but if the thought of making him cry, the thought of disappointment, the thought of, of doing something that hurts him really hurts me. And it's so easy for us to go, I'm not going to do it again. I'm going to make sure that I don't do it again. I am not going to go here. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to be a friend with that person because that person drags me down. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to pray. I'm, I, 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 You see, in the world, you've got the Pharisees. You've got the religious people that say, I am doing this, and I'm doing that, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that. It doesn't work that way. But it doesn't mean that the Lord, because he loves you, you know who you are in Christ, but remember, he's in charge. And he is going to tell you what to do. But remember, Paul took what, 11 chapters before he opened up his mouth and says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then he starts telling you what to do. Why? Because you change from knowing who you are. You know who you are. And that's where your mind is settled on that. And once you know who you are, you know that smile comes back on his face when you draw closer to him. And remember Peter, that was our lesson three, three weeks ago. Remember Peter, yes Lord, I love you. You know I love you. You just draw him closer and closer. And you saw the transformation that took place in Peter's life. The same uh, trans transformation takes place in us when we do that. And, and so forth. And if we're children, joint heirs. Um, 
as I was reading that, I thought, you know, and then I was walking this morning and thinking about some of the Bible verse, and you know, the same thing is so evident even in the Old Testament. Do you realize that people in the Old Testament that were saved were saved the same way? They believed God. They trusted God. They lived knowing that they were in his presence. Um, there's a couple of the psalmists that, oh, I'd love to meet whoever wrote them if they aren't David. Especially where he says, how precious, how, pre how priceless is your unfailing love. Both high and low find refuge, where? In the shadow of his wings. Well, the wings is the kingdom of God. They feast on the abundance of his household and they drink from the rivers of his delight. That's the kingdom of God. Why? Because in you, God, is light, is the tree of life. And for us, in your light, we have light. That's the kingdom of God. Another one I was thinking of. Lord, you have assigned to me my portion and my cup. That's that adoption. Lord, you've assigned to me my portion and my cup. My lot is secure. The boundaries have fallen for me on pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. That's the kingdom of God. God doesn't change. They didn't earn their way into the kingdom in the Old Testament. They didn't get to a see. They didn't get to experience the fullness of it. But the same trust in God is what it's all about. But we're on this side of the cross and we even have the added, added, added benefit of knowing Christ and dwelling within us. And so we need to realize, be careful. Realize the struggle is real, right? But when you when we hit those struggles, let's start going back to who you are. Because if you do that, the first thing you're gonna do is say, oh God, I'm so sorry. And he's going to say, daughter, I forgive you. Son, I forgive you. And then you're going to climb up in this map, and he's going to give you a big hug and the biggest smile you ever had. Amen. And when that happens, you're going to say, you know what? Haiti is the pits. Give me the United States. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much, God. Help us to understand it's your love that teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. It's your grace, it's your love. And help us to know, God, that we are children of God, children of light in this dark world. And boy, if those Haitians went back to Haiti, I believe that they would have brought the light and told them about the good old America and maybe even tried to get them back into the United States too. May we also go out in the world, God, with the gospel of Jesus Christ and show them by our smiles and the assurance that we have in who we are in Christ, that they will want to come into the kingdom. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Want someone to love you. You're in the crowd, but you're alone. Jesus loves you. Yeah. Would you, would you smile, smile and walk, and walk away? away? Yeah. Brother, but you hear him calling. Don't you care that he died? It's, it's his eye on his Yeah.